Hello guys, welcome to Solving Solutions, your number one channel where you get solutions to all your solving problems. It's nice having you in class again today. How have you been? On today's video, we are going to use Global Mapper to demonstrate how you can carry out a um, buffer analysis, right? Good. Now, um, we have used this set of data on um, QGIS and on ArcGIS. However, we still felt it important to use it on Global Mapper to still demonstrate buffer. Now, before ever we carry out um, the buffer analysis, we need to um, turn on the digitizer tool, right? Good. So now we turn on the digitizer tool. Now the TPI is that the tool allows you to modify existing vector feature as well as to create new ones, right? Good. So you can just um, read it down. So we click on OK. Now you can see the cross sign asking us to edit. So we are trying to create a buffer around this road right good we are trying to create a buffer around this road so the idea is that you know we have um, points lines and polygons as what vector representations and then since we want to create a buffer around this road which means we are going to start digitizing this not that we will digitize it but we are going to start the digitizer so when we click on this vector which is the road we will now realize that yes we can now perform the editing which we saw on the tip right good so having done that we can now come to digitizer then um, under digitizer we come down to create area polygon feature right good then we now select create buffer around selected feature now the buffer area creation um, setup window is open let's just give this a name let's call it a um, buffer or let's say the buffer zone, right? Good. Let's just call it the buffer zone. Now that's the name we want to give it. Let me just copy it and then we are going to check something now. Now if you use this drop down, it's asking you to create a new layer for the feature or maybe add it to maybe an existing layer, right? Good. So we are using the buffer zone. Now enter the buffer distance from the selected features as well as how many iterations of that buffer distance. The first thing here is the buffer distance. You know, let's say we need 50 meters around the road, right? With that um, on the left and on the right, there's a point where we are going to determine that. Now you also have an opportunity to work on the units, right? Remember that um, on the other videos, we have been using the projected um, CRS, the data that on um, projected CRS. And if you come down here, you can also see UTM zone 32, which shows you that it's actually what projected. Now we have line feature buffer setup. You know, we try to use it on the left hand side, but you can use it on the, on both sides, right? Good on both sides. Then, um, if you don't want to use the 50 meter, you can actually get the distance from the attribute if you have uh, made a provision for the distance on your attribute table. So these are some of the options you can set up before ever you finally create what your your buffer right now the area type for buffer that is the extent that will be covered what is the area type you know um, global mapper allows you to give them um, different area types definition to define your area type if you would maybe want to call it a reef or maybe a land area or maybe a lake or a building or whatever the case is how you want to define it so if you are trying to do something productive for assessment or maybe for any other purpose you can decide to define whatever area type it is but let's just leave it as an unknown area type and if all of these other options are left at default you can just click on ok good so we now have what our buffer zone we now have our 50 meter buffer zone right good now this shows that the the buildings that are inside of this polygon are actually within 50 meters on both um, left and right of this road, right? Now, this is not the end of today's tutorial. We have shown you how to create a buffer using a global map. However, we can also decide to just select these features that are actually inside of this our what inside of this our buffer zone. So there's a tool here, special operations, right? Now we are going to define the special operation we want to carry out. Let's say we need an um, intersect, right? Let's use intersect. 
The intersect predicate returns the set of features from one layer that intersects features in another layer. So the idea is that we want to get features in the built-up area that um, in the built-up area layer that intersect what the buffer zone layer, right? Good. Good. So um, layer one will be the built-up area. The layer two will be what the buffer zone, right? Good. So having set um, these uh, parameters, we can decide to run. Good. So we have now created or we have now selected. Yeah, we have now selected the buildings or features that are within the 50 meter um, buffer zone from what the road, right? Good. So there are different um, special operations you can carry out. You can decide to see how some of them um, works or maybe all of them works. We decided to use intersects for today's tutorial because of what we are using what um, buffer or for achieving our aim, right? Good. Now you can see as the line touches any building, that building is being selected because it intersects that building, right? Which now gives room for maybe compensation, demolition, or whatever the case is. So thanks for coming to class. We open. We have shown you how to carry out buffer analysis in a global mapper. And by extension, we have also shown you how to carry out um, a special operation called um, intersect, right? Good. That allows you to create a new selection that contains the intersect between what two vector layers, right? Good. So thanks for coming to class. Um, we hope we have provided solutions to this particular surveying chairs related problem. We are going to see you on the next video. If you have any question, do not hesitate to drop it on the comment section or contact us and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Ensure you have a very good time. Bye.